week, we take you to Bacolet to explore a villa like no other. Welcome to Atlantic, located in close proximity to the Blue Haven Hotel fine dining restaurants, banks, and the Bacolet Beach. This villa is the ideal place for your next vacation. Here's a look at what's to come in the next half hour. I'm Davia Chambers, and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Eid cut commission fiber optics at Cove. We take you to Speyside for the police town meeting and later details on the World of Work graduation 2016. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. I was introduced to the marine environment by my biology teacher when I was 14 years old and I decided to make it my passion. So I've been diving for almost 32 years. I decided, listen, this is the job for me. I also find great joy in introducing the kids uh, to that environment because that's our future. I am Alvin Douglas. I'm a dive shop operator at the Store Bay Beach facility and tourism is all I will take. Welcome back. Atlantic Villa is owned by Brent Anderson and was built 22 years ago. This two-story villa boasts two apartments. Now our lead story this week is one that has details on the commissioning of a new facility that can help Eadcott attract more business to the park. Here are the details in this report. This carrier service facility at the Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park stores fiber optic cables. These are bundles of glass or plastic threads that transmit data messages across long distances. Tenants all across the park now have access to more dependable and efficient telecommunications services. A key aspect of the development of the park is to satisfy the ICT requirements, not just of the park, but of Tobago and tenants who reside in the park. So this facility basically, whatever your ICT requirements are, whether you are an industrial facility or whether you are uh, in the service sector, whatever your communication needs are, we must be in a position to satisfy them. And this is what um, this facility does. The center was constructed in about six months. It was commissioned in July. And negotiations have already taken place with the major telecommunications service providers. So thus far, we have TSTT's facility deployed, right? So if a, a tenant, indicated us that they wanted service from TSTT. Our facility would connect to TSTT's facility. We've had discussions with both Digicel and Flow also. Digicel is supposed to come next to TSTT and next to Digicel will be Flow's facility. Mr. Mitchell says there are plans to ensure Cove's tenants get the best deals from the service providers. What we are seeking to put in place, right, is a framework within which tenants who locate on the park which gets subsidized telecommunication services, right? Because we have deployed the infrastructure, right? It's readily available, and service providers can now just come in and tap in. They don't have to do anything, just tap into our facilities. We feel that there's a benefit that should be down to our tenants. And we are seeking to have tenants who locate on the park enjoy lower telecommunication rates from those who locate outside of the park. The fiber optic network will also facilitate the operations of the data center, which EDCOT plans to construct in the near future in this area. Now, the infrastructure set up here means that Tobago will be closer to achieving its goals of diversifying and strengthening its economy. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Location outdoor space, the unspoiled view and the pool are a few qualifying factors that keep guests coming back right here at Atlantic Villa. Now the face-to-face -face community series provide residents an opportunity to voice their concerns. This week we go to the Canaan Bonacord Crown Point community to hear what these residents had to say. Here are the highlights. The face-to-face -face community series came to a close recently at the Panam building in Crown Point. The work done in the electoral district over the past four years was highlighted via video presentation. And there is a commitment that upgrades to the playing field, the community centre and the indoor facility in the area will be completed. 
we know what we want to do but we know what we are capable of doing at this point in time and therefore the commitment to a community center of the highest possible class in this electoral district still remains a commitment the design is still there the concept is still uh, acceptable and accepted the proposed establishment of a sandals resort in tobago is an issue residents wanted cleared up yes a negotiating team would have been installed to negotiate the sandals deal however we in canaan bonacord crown point we are some of the primary stakeholders i feel that a representative from canaan bonacord and crown point and a representative of boko should have been on that team the chief secretary says he's proud that tobagonians are passionate and concerned about their heritage he says there's nothing to worry about but we also have a responsibility to utilize it for the benefit of this generation and generations to come and therefore there has to be a balance between protection and utilization and i'm saying that you have to operate on the premise that the decision makers in the Tobago House of Assembly are just as interested in protecting the heritage of Tobago, but they're also interested in using that heritage for the development of Tobago. The face-to-face -face community meeting series started in February and saw 13 meetings held in the island's 12 electoral districts. I'm Kuhn Defritas for Let's Talk Tobago. This property was constructed to be a home away from home for the winter period to accommodate an extended family with their own privacy and the luxury of ocean views and outdoor space. Now we switch gears as a group of young people struck gold at the 9th Caribbean Cadets and Mini Cadets Table Tennis Championship. Omid Mills fills us in in this report. 12 out of 14 gold medals. That was Trinidad and Tobago's Hall at the 9th Caribbean Cadets and Mini Cadets Table Tennis Championships in Jamaica. 13-year-old Darren Douglas was one of the standouts. Since age 8, he's been playing table tennis and returned this year with four gold medals and the title of Most Valuable Player. I feel very elated. I was happy. I was, when I met in the finals, I was a bit nervous, but I knew I could not do it. I just play how I play in training. The Trinidad and Tobago squad of 16 included seven Tobagonians, and each of the island's players brought home gold medals. Ten-year-old Shinika Collette, who played at her first regional championships, shared her thoughts on the games. Well, the experience was nice. The tournament was a bit hard, but it was good. National team coach Dexter Abbott, who coaches many of Tobago's young talents, says he's happy to see that their preparations paid off. The tour was the spa excellence, and uh, the parents were there the support for the children, um, all the hard work, uh, they, they saw the, uh, the benefit of working hard and they really worked hard for the tournament and I think now they are very buoyed and, and I think they, they, their vision has now been widened and uh, they are looking forward to things and now they are searching for information more and I guess uh, that will go from strength to strength. The THA's Department of Sport supported the Tobago contingent is all a part of the department's mandate to help young athletes develop, learn to manage their time, and balance sport with their studies. It's also a means of helping students secure academic scholarships and experience different cultures. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Up next, we take you to the police town meeting. Don't touch that remote. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back.
thanks for joining us right here at Atlantic Villa. Now this property reflects a Mediterranean style and the name was inspired by the fact that the villa overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. Allow me to take you to Speyside as this report has details on a police town meeting geared towards facilitating communication between the residents and the members of the protective services. Here are the details in this story. Can we trust the police? That's the question. And I've been around the village. I've been to Scarborough. I've been to other village and environs. And for me personally, if the police have to get a meaningful relationship with any community, it must start with the respect from the head at first. It was an open forum where residents of Speyside and Charlotteville aired their concerns about policing in their communities directly with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. I would like to know if these officers act on information and investigation or just information because some of the time these information might be other people's personal grievance which they might just get information and then they will act on it by not investigating to find the truth on the answer or the matter and some of these officers might have personal grievance against other people too. We are all human beings and there will be instances when that will be done. I'm not saying that will not be done because it's not supposed to be done, but we are human beings, and I know officers from time to time will use their personality to um, gather at people or maybe to do things that they're not supposed to be doing. That is wrong, and it cannot be right. Residents also asked for regular foot patrols. I would like to see the police in Speyside on foot patrol. Because most of the time, whenever we see the police, they sometimes pass in their vehicle. This is one thing I was not expecting to hear coming from any community at this point in time. The reason being that one of our mandate of our strategic plan is that we have people-centered patrol. And those people-centered patrols are foot patrols. And that plan is in its final year. This is in the third year. And Charleville police officers are expected to be part of that plan by instituting foot patrol on a daily basis. The goal of these monthly town meetings by the TTPS is to bridge the gap between the police and the public. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The apartments upstairs and downstairs are both open and roomy with a spacious patio area that encourages you to do nothing but relax and appreciate the view of the beautiful flower gardens. One community facility gets an upgrade to be able to host meetings and events. Let's take a look at this facility in Swam. This is the Spring Garden Wim Union Mary Sill Swam Community Center where upgrades are currently taking place. The center is home to many community events, including meetings, dance and music sessions, and vocational and skills training programs. This center is one of five being upgraded. The works include repairs to kitchens, roofs, drains, walls, stages, and the installation of air conditioning units. A lot of these community facilities are used for major events, weddings, seminars, that sort of thing. And there's always been a, a complaint about heat. A number of the facilities been have been requesting ACs, especially with the new facilities, with, with the AC space and, and people realizing you could increase the seating capacity for those said areas, right? Because when in an AC space, you could uh, accommodate much more persons, much more functions, that sort of thing. Other community centers are being repaired in Canaan, Bon Accord, Hope, Goodwood, and Lands for Me. The Cats and Jammers and Carib Dixieland Pan Theatres are also getting a facelift in the form of improved electrical, plumbing, and sewage systems. The Division of Community Development and Culture's Maintenance Department is following a stringent procurement policy for these repairs. If the division intends to, to infuse a much more consistent uh, approach to the, the, the maintenance program, as well as its, its procurement 
practices and that sort of thing to ensure that we have value for money one and ensure that, that, that contractors in the Tobago space uh, who all have a, a, a fair uh, attempt at, 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 at bids and that sort of thing. The seven youth or Y zones around the island are also having work done. Attention is being given to the rust accumulating on the pre-purposed metal containers located close to the ocean. Residents are also being updated on the repairs in their respective communities. Obviously, you know, because of the original scope of works, some of them would have been scaled down, right? And questions would, would be asked and we needed to explain why, that sort of thing. But as much as is possible, we, we, as much as there would have been changes, we try to make sure that all the, the major problems of, of each site was dealt with. And I think the communities understood. The renovations are all being done by local contractors and should be completed by the end of this month. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Now this villa is perfect for large families. The Atlantic accommodates 12 persons with 5 bedrooms and 5 bathrooms to ensure convenience, no lines for the bathroom and comfort for all. We jump aboard a training initiative which focuses on the island's fishermen. A workshop was recently hosted to encourage fishermen to adopt safer handling of their precious catch. Here are the details. For many Tobagonians, fish is a household favorite, no matter how you prepare it. It's delicious and it's also a great source of protein and healthy fats. But everyone wants to make sure their fish is also safe to consume. That's why the Department of Fisheries and Marine Resources held a workshop to refresh the knowledge of fishermen and vendors on the importance of proper fish handling techniques. We are currently in the process of improving the fisheries industry. Right? And in order to do that, we need to remind or enforce to our fishermen, vendors and processors the importance and the, 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 the whole practice of proper fish handling techniques. It's the fish handling in order to have a striving business, you, know, you need to understand what it is to, be, to handle fish properly. It's not just catching the fish and taking it out there. There are procedures to follow, whether it be on the boat, in the facilities, and so, so we need to um, remind them of all those processes. The workshop focused on key areas like seafood handling on fishing vessels and the island's various fishing facilities. We aim to throw to the public the whole matter of fishermen taking care of themselves before they go out. Personal hygiene is a crucial part of fish handling. The, how you treat your boat, the, the methods that you use to catch your fish, the whole icing process. And also, when you take it to the facilities, the procedures, the processes that you go through with, when handling fish, for example, you know you have to ensure that the fish is properly iced so as to prevent the, the, the growth of Bacteria. Bacteria is ever present, but we limit the growth of bacteria by the proper icing techniques. When you take it to the facility, you know you have to maintain that temperature as well. Roadside fish vending is a decades old practice in Trinidad and Tobago, but fishermen are being made aware that there are some serious drawbacks to handling fish out in the open. There in the open, sunlight affects back, um, increased bacterial growth. You have carbon monoxide from the cars blowing out that affects the fish as well. So it in in the long run will affect the consumer. So we're basically just trying to remind the fishermen of those ill ways of street side vending. Also, we're highlighting our facilities. The facilities were provided by the division and we want to let the fishermen know it's there for their, for their personal use. And we know that we need to, we're currently in the process of improving those facilities so the fishermen can get the best use of those facilities in improving their daily lives. So, if fish is part of your healthy diet or simply adds the right note to your meal, you'll want to make sure it's fresh and, of course, that it's handled safely with you in mind. I'm Kuhn DeFritis for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, highlights on the World of Work graduation ceremony. Don't move. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Hey, I'm a Maxi Taxi operator and tourism is all our thing. I am in housekeeping and tourism is all our thing.
I'm a tour guide. Tourism is all a wee thing. And we all, all benefit from, from tourism. We're still exploring Atlantic Villa, which is a three-minute drive from the island's capital, Scarborough. Or it can be a cool 20-minute walk to the capital. The location of the villa makes it one of its assets. Now listen to this. Over the summer vacation period, there were a number of programs geared at exposing young people to the world of work. Caroline Wallace has the details on their graduation ceremony. Here they are, the graduates of the annual World of Work Program 2016, hosted by the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and the Sport. Over 100 young adults from across the island learned more about the working world and the importance of work ethics at both private and public institutions. This year we have seen record numbers because in more recent years we would have seen approximately 50 to 60 participants and I dare say we have an opportunity to extend sincere congratulations. This year we have reached approximately 114 participants in our World of Work program 2016. This year, I dare say that the private sector has also been able to join us in providing approximately 60 spaces, 30 plus participants from the private sector coming on board. The young people were part of a five-day training program, an interview day, and then a five-day placement program at various institutions. I was totally blown away. The, the attire of the two representatives, uh, or participants as I should say, that were there, um, the personality, the conduct, the mannerism, they actually seemed like they were part of our establishment for quite some time. The participants were also trained in resume writing, time management, goal setting, and communication skills. It's a great initiative, and um, I believe it prepares our youth, our young people, definitely not just for the world of work, but the world at large. The World of Work program began in 2009. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk to Bego. At Atlantic Villa, guests can occupy themselves with a number of activities, be it taking a dip in the pool, bird watching from the balconies, surfing the beach that's right opposite, and even a little fruit picking. I Am Woman is the name of a conference held recently to empower women on the island. Kimberly Job takes us to the workshop for the highlights. It's so sad to be alone. Help me make it through the night. The talented voice of Akila Murphy Bruce set the stage for the Leadership Women's Empowerment Forum entitled, I Am Woman. Said or thought, you cannot trust a woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the annual conference, which is in its fourth year, was hosted by the Division of Community Development and Culture in collaboration with the Embassy of the United States of America. Facilitators Anne Doyle and Terry Lee Ince of the United States led the many women present in exercises geared towards the upliftment and empowerment of women in society. And we have many, many problems in our societies, particularly related to violence against women, violence against girls, uh, that first it begins with women, you know, and if we're going to help solve these problems as the mothers of the human family, then number one, we need to be strong ourselves first. And so it's to begin with the women so that they feel a sense of empowerment and strength in themselves, but also to give them a chance to talk to each other about the issues that they want to work together to solve. So if there's a message that comes out of here, it is the idea of being stronger together. During the workshop, participants formed groups and discussed a number of topics that are affecting women at this time. I'm here now interacting with complete strangers. They won't be strangers at the end of the day, 
but I'm grateful for this opportunity. I like to meet people. I like to express my views and hear people's views. You know, I just love interaction, and this workshop is giving me that opportunity. We are this group. We are talking about violence and abuse of women, and um, I have been in the process or action of helping abuse women, and um, I really enjoy this interactive and the ideas pooling together that I will be able to even use some of the ideas. Well, so far I enjoy the program. It's go going good because, you know, you're learning a lot about how to work with other women, how to be a leader in the society. Wise, outstanding, motivated, adventurous and noble was the new and improved definition of woman during the workshop. When all the time is we, you and me, must be a brother's keepers in this country and what time From the Division of Community Development and Culture, I'm Kimberly Job for Let's Talk Tobago. It's Have Your Say Time and our question this week is, why do you think education is important? While you think about it, let's take a look at who had their say this week. Education is important because if you don't have an education, you can't have a proper work to do and if you don't have a work, You'll be stealing people's stuff in the stores. Education is important, it's, it's a, a, a basic factor in life to help you better develop skills, you know, uh, mentally, physically. Education is the key to success and to elevate yourself to become a better person in life. Education is the spice of life, that is what makes everybody happy and make our country better. I would go back to what Mighty Sparrow said, without an education in your head, your whole life is a misery. You're better off dead. For education, I think it's paramount. Everything now, you have to be educated in a way. You have to be in a sense that you can say, well, six and seven subjects, you know, but you have to be educated in a way that you can spell your name, know your about, come to change. When you go to school and learn, you're going to, be, you're going to get a better job, you're going to get to earn plenty of money, you're going to succeed in life at the end of the day. Education is the key to success. And education takes you wherever you want to go. So that is. The way we have to go, if we, don't, if we are not educated, we are foolish to the world. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program. And be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Canaan Bonacord Crown Point Heritage Production 2016. We hope you enjoy. Hey, Baba, yes, go inside and straighten up the place and don't know how we're coming back. Yes, ma'am. You and Roy. Yes, ma'am. You and Roy. Wilbert, go long out. Fold them bucket with water. Don't follow Wilbur. Don't pitch no Bible. You yes. hear what I'm telling you? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Girl, you joke, yes? For the war. It was me, Clementina. Same day at the funeral, the way I'm in a tap out in a me frack, me bang for pick up right there at the graveyard. Marilla, eh, uh eh. -huh. Hey, so we are drawing up some of I don't want to talk too loud as Marilla. Eh, no. I tell you already. I don't want my name today in people mouth of village who said me broke up their marriage. You are going to blight me. Esmeralda, let me ask you something. You don't feel cool in the night time? No, me get one new blanket. Well, me mean, apart from the blanket, now you might want to roll against a nice Well, oh God, let me roll, me I roll from the blanket. So you get more than one blanket? Uh -huh. Yeah.